It's August 1988 and pro-democracy protests are rapidly gathering momentum. Burma is in political turmoil. In these rarely seen pictures, demonstrators hold aloft a photograph of the country's anti-colonial hero, General Aung San, assassinated just before Burma gained its independence. It's on this day, before this vast crowd, that his daughter, Aung San Suu Kyi, takes on his political mantle, months after returning to her homeland from Britain to look after her critically ill mother. She told the crowd that she could not, as her father's daughter, remain indifferent to all that was going on. Within a month, the army had seized power in a coup after brutally suppressing the demonstrations. They called elections, but when Aung San Suu Kyi's party won overwhelmingly, the military refused to hand over power. And by then, she was already under her first long period of house arrest. Hello, how are you? How nice to meet you. In 1995, Aung San Suu Kyi told the BBC's Fergal Keane of the effect detention had on her. I think I became more political I was when I, after I was put under house arrest than before. Because once I was under house arrest, I became totally a political animal. Because this was my whole existence. Aung San Suu Kyi was under house arrest when she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, collected by her two sons and husband Michael Harris, an Oxford academic. It helped to turn her into a global symbol of peaceful resistance to oppression. When Michael Harris was dying of cancer in Britain in 1999, the Burmese regime refused him permission to visit his wife, but said she could travel to see him. She feared she would not be allowed back into Burma and took the deeply painful decision not to go. Her house arrest was last extended after a bizarre incident in which an American, John Yetto, swam to her lakeside home uninvited, leading to her being found guilty of breaking state security laws. Meditation, studying, hours of listening to the radio, Aung San Suu Kyi's daily regime in detention. Those who know her well speak of her steely determination and beguiling charm. Her experience and that of her people has shaped her view of freedom. I was a prisoner, but I, I felt that I was free because I was not frightened. And I thought that a lot of people who were out there were uh, living in such difficult circumstances. Perhaps they were less free than I was. Perhaps they were frightened. And if they were frightened, they were certainly less free than I was. So for me, real freedom is freedom from fear. Aung San Suu Kyi acknowledges the influence Gandhi, Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela have had on her life. But it was the father who died when she was just two who bequeathed her a profound sense of destiny. Mike Aldridge, BBC News.